I'm Daniel Stenberg. I have this funny accent because I'm from Sweden. Uh, I started playing with HTTP uh, basically 23 years ago when I started a little fun project um, that I'm working with today full time. I work for the company Wolf SSL. We sell curl related services and support for everyone. Uh, I started working in the IETF basically 10, 12 years ago. IETF being the organization behind HTTP 3. Uh, basically, work, that's the organization working on everything that I'm going to talk about today. So, this is the road for uh, my little story today. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about HTTP 1, uh, 2, and 3, where we come from, where we are, and where we're going, a little bit why, uh, some of the problems with that, how we're going to introduce quick, and a, little, uh, a few words about how it works. HTTP 3 is the HTTP protocol on top of quick. And uh, there are some challenges with uh, doing this, and uh, it'll ship soon, surely. Uh, back to that. Uh, you, know, you can go to sleep for now. I'll wake you later. Uh, this is the web of the 1990s, uh, roughly 1995, where uh, we got HTTP 1. Uh, it didn't really look like this, trust me. But uh, it was a different web back then, you know. Uh, animated uh, under construction signs and pretty much that uh, and all of our, a lot of things and the web changed a lot and then we introduced HP2 we shipped that spec to 2015 so not too long ago and now we're already working on uh, HP3 um, so yeah HP is that funny protocol you know when you're sending a, a request from the client request method headers and blah 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 and there's a response to code and headers and body, blah, blah, blah. You, you all recognize it. You've seen it before. It's, that's HTTP. So HTTP started over TCP, right? TCP being that fundamental little protocol underneath everything. We, I, I, I like to view it as a chain, individual links here. The links are IP packets, right? Send a bunch of IP packets. They will have to end up in the other end. If they don't end up there, we resend them. So they create a, a connection. TCP IP, we call it, right? So we have this three-way handshake, ping, pong, pong, and we have a connection, and we send data, and it comes in that order, or it doesn't come at all. Um, we just send lost packages and everything. It's in clear text, too, so everyone can snoop on this over the wire. This, the first RFC for TCP, that came 1981, so approaching 40 years. Trusted old protocol, it serves, has served us pretty well so far, I'd say. Uh, but these days, uh, we talk about HTTPS a lot, right? So HTTPS being TCP with TLS, and then we do HTTP on that. And really, if we look at the trends, here's uh, some Firefox trend data. We can see that web pages today, or loading web pages, are done more and more over HTTPS. This is, um, well, you can see it. It's basically around 80, 90% somewhere, a little bit depending on details here. And if you look at the same data from Chrome and Google, it is pretty much the same. Maybe, uh, well, it splits it differently on, uh, on platforms instead of continents, but it doesn't matter. The trend is clear, and, and it's probably going to climb a little bit more, I'd say. Maybe not to 100, but definitely the web or, or HTTP traffic is a lot of HTTPS these days. So we're talking about HTTPS, right? HTTPS being then TCP with TLS. So we, that's how we do uh, HTTPS for H both HTTP 1 and 2. We add then the uh, transport layer security on top of the TCP, and it adds another ping pong, right? Or actually more ping pongs, and depending on version, but at least more back and forth to get that uh, connection up. And then we have a security and privacy. We know who we're talking to. There's no man in between, and nobody can actually eavesdrop or tamper with the data on the, on, in transit. Excellent. That's what we want, right? So this is how a protocol stack looks like. You know, the traditional thing, we have the IP, TCP, we do TLS, and we do HTTP. This is the way we do HTTP, or have done, yeah, since, uh, since we invented TLS. Uh, almost 20 years by now. <coughs> so, okay. It's over TCP. TCP, 1981. So we started out with HTTP. We didn't start with 1.1, but 1.1 was shipped in 1997, the first uh, one. So it was really fun, and we, 
HTTP 1.1 fixed problems with HTTP 1.0, so it improved how we, how we would use TCP. So instead of closing TCP connections all the time, we could reuse TCP connections better. Excellent, that's what we, that is what we want to do, right? TCP connections should be long-lived because they get up to speed after a certain time. We need them to be around, and they become faster and faster. So, so. Uh, but on this, at the same time, we <laughs> Uh, HTTP 1.1 only makes one request at a time, right? So we open up a lot of connections to the same site. A, a browser typically makes six connections to each host name so that we can do a lot of uh, transfers in parallel. Like if you have 100 images on your site, you want to have them all come down, maybe six, six at a time. Um, but this created a, a new situation because now we have a lot of TCP connections open. And, uh, Sites uh, then also invented new host names, so, we, so the, the browsers would open six connections to each host name, and you would invent 10 host names, so we would have 60 connections. Then suddenly we have 60 TCP connections for each site. That makes it really hard for a browser to keep all those connections up, so it has to close them really often. Um, so that, that ended up in a situation so that if you look at the Firefox stats for how how it behaves in the HTTP 1.1 world, the median number of requests per TCP connection is one. So we're basically back on this situation where we close the connections very, very fast. And again, it's really bad for TCP because it never really gets up to speed until we close it again. And then we have this problem when we have a lot of connections and we're sending these huge TCP, uh, HTTP requests over them, we get a T uh, HTTP head of line blocking problem. Someone in ahead of us might take longer time than we want to, right? like lines in the supermarket, which line is the fast one, which is the slow one, which is the trainee in, in front of you, or which has the problematic customer, you know, who can't pay or needs to find something. It's hard, and the browser really has that problem. It's hard to know where to do it. The head, uh, HTTP header line blocking problem. To solve this or to work around it, people have been creative, and we have done a lot of fun things in, on the web to work around these HTTP 1.1 problems and to get more data uh, sooner like spriting and, and uh, sharding, and we concatenate everything, and we do um, all sorts of fun things in ways to avoid the problems with HTTP 1.1. And some of those fun workarounds we made into a protocol, and we called it HTTP 2. So instead, um, right, it shipped in May 2015. So instead of doing all those funny workarounds, we stuffed it into the protocol so we can do everything uh, the same way and in a specified way. So instead of doing those 60 connections to each site, well, six per host name. We do one connection. One connection, and we do many streams over that single connection, right? Hundreds, well, at least up to 100 usually streams within that single connection. Much better TCP use, because now we suddenly we can have long-lived TCP connections. We can get up to speed. We can saturate the network in both directions much better. Much better, much faster uh, in theory, right? Or, or in most cases, actually. So we have a lot of par many parallel streams. That's why it's stream in the background. Uh, so, but instead, we then got a new problem, right? So doing everything over one connection, that's awesome when your connection is great. But what happens when you lose a single packet there? You have 100 streams going over that single TCP connection. One of those links in the chain is gone, right? 100 streams then suddenly have to wait for that single packet to re get retranspeeded, and then 100 streams can continue. Lose another packet, 100 streams wait again and then we retransmit that packet and we can continue. Really, really terrible for the packet loss situation, the TCP head of line blocking problem. And at the same time, those sort of, yeah, we, we actually knew about these problems when we shipped HTTP2, but it was still a step forward. But at the same time, protocol development or network development in general in the, on the internet has suffered from this fun thing that, you know, internet is full of boxes, you know that. Uh, boxes like routers, gateways, load balancers, uh, all sorts of fun things that companies buy and put on the network to run the network, basically. And uh, it's running software, and uh, that runs software that was sort of fine, and it knew about networks when we put that box in that position for that uh, service, right? And that was five years ago, ten years ago, it was yesterday. It doesn't matter, but they typically know about existing protocols, how they work, right now. They, they know what's right and what's wrong. They know. So um, they, they freeze how the internet works in the middle. Because on the edges, when we, we see 
in our own uh, client, I mean, uh, phones and desktops and everything, we upgrade our browsers like every day or every week or every two days, very often. Even our servers, we actually upgrade eventually every year, every six months, every two years. It happens at least. Uh, the ones in the middle, not so much. So basically we have an edge internet that moves, everything in the middle is stuck in time. So this is how the internet works. Uh, yeah. So that's the site I'm going to, and that's me. And, you know, internet through all the boxes, and that's four middle boxes, and they're stuck in time. They know how the internet worked when someone put the boxes there. The, uh, they then have this fun um, effect on the internet called ossification. And ossification means that they're stuck in time. So, for example, when we created HTTP2 as a protocol, we said in the, in the spec that, sure, you can do HTTP over clear text. You don't have to do it over HTTPS. Because back in those days, that was important. Sure, you can do it. So you can try HTTP2 over the internet. TCP port 80. That's HTTP <laughs> port, right? But it happens so that, that a lot of these boxes, they, they were put there back in the days. They know that TCP port 80, that's HTTP 1.1. So they will help you to do HTTP 1.1. Whatever you talk over that port, they will help you do HTTP 1.1, which isn't the same as HTTP 2. So if you try HTTP 2, a lot of these boxes will break your traffic. So basically nobody is doing HTTP 2 uh, in clear text uh, for that reason, and no browser does. Curl can. Uh, so and then, uh, sure, you can also fix problems in other protocol parts, right? You, you can improve T TCP, make TCP a little bit faster. The fun invention called TFO, TCP Fast Open, uh, came quite a long time ago. I think it's almost 10 years ago now. It's actually a way to send data earlier in the handshake to, to reduce, well, to basically get the data out sooner or earlier so that, yeah, get a faster handshake or get data out faster. Fun thing. So it turns out, of course, what happens? These boxes, you think they accept some new bits in the TCP header? Well, most of them do, but <laughs> many don't. So they just throw it away, right? Suspicious bits, throw it away. The, the TCP fast open turns out to be a very slow open in many times. So basically, there's not a, not a single uh, browser and no client operating systems are nowadays setting this by default because it really doesn't work across the internet because of this ossification. Other things, we can't really introduce new protocols at this uh, uh, transport layer. You know, TCP, UDP, they are the only protocols we can do over all these boxes because those are the only protocols they know how to NAT and, and uh, handle. Uh, so we don't introduce new transport protocols on, on that, uh, you know, on top of IP. A few years ago, we introduced a new compression method for HTTP. Guess what happened? There are a lot of boxes that knows about HTTP and HTTP compression, and that's not broadly. So a lot of these boxes, they break the traffic if you try clear text broadly compression. So of course, we only do broadly over HTTPS connections because that's encrypted so the boxes can see it. And sort of on and on and on. Basically, ossification really, really hampers innovation and sort of and changing protocols because whatever we introduce in the networks and the boxes can see that, they draw conclusions and sort of things get stuck in time. We can't change it anymore because they, the behavior is set after a very short period of time. So we encrypt more as a solution to this. Hide it. If it's just random noise, they can't draw any conclusions, right or wrong. So how do we uh, change the internet and do new protocols in spite of the ossification? Well, quick is one way to do it. That's the official logo. So these companies are all involved in the quick working group in the IETF, a lot of big uh, data companies uh, in various ways. Um, and th then it's um, a new transport protocol in spite of this problem I just mentioned. And how do you do a new transport protocol then in spite of these problems? Well, there's this company called Google. They did a little experiment. They actually started a long time ago. They made it public, I think. I mean, uh, uh, they talked about it 2013, which is then two years before HTTP2 even shipped. And um, they basically introduced a protocol that sent HTTP2 frames over the internet over UDP. It worked, and they have a, a client, maybe you've heard about it, but it, it, some have, and um, they have also fairly well used uh, web services, so they're in an ex excellent position to run experiments right over the internet, and it turned out it, it works, and you can actually get things faster. So with some proven web scale numbers, they took it to the IETF, and 
sure, let's set up a working group in the ITF and let's make this a standard for everyone. And they did, and that's again, 2015 was the year of the HTTP2, so I think it took a little time because it collided, so that it's basically the same people involved. So it became a working group in 2016, and now it's uh, being worked in the ITF. And the IETF then said, sure, this is an awesome protocol, we should really make it a standard, but we can't make it the way you did it, we have to modify it. Because then Google had made it one single uh, entity, basically sending HTTP2 frames over, the U over UDP, so you could more or less have your UDP, uh, sorry, your HTTP2 stack just sending over UDP instead. But in the ITF, they said, well, if we're going to do this as a protocol, a standard thing, we should make it as a transport protocol and an application protocol on top of it. And it shouldn't be for HTTP only either. It should be for other protocols as well. So taken into the ITF, it is a completely different <coughs> Quick, uh, confusingly enough, also named Quick then. So it's the Google Quick and the ITF Quick. Completely different, so uh, don't confuse them. Uh, we tend to sort of call, of call it the Google Quick or the G Quick, but that is going away. IETF Quick is going to be the Quick going forward. So I'll ignore the Google Quick for, for the rest of this talk. So when you're doing a new transport protocol, you can improve a lot of things. As I said, TCP since the early 90, oh, 80s, right? It's been around for a while. People have this pent <laughs> save the demand and everyone wants to fix all those transport issues. Now we have, we have the chance now. So we can fix that head, TCP head of line blocking problem, right? Setting up a connection, having many streams over that connection. If we lose a packet, maybe we don't have to hamper all the streams at once. Only, sort of, only the streams in that lost packet will be sort of waiting until that r lost packet gets retransmitted. Gets retransmitted. We can do much faster handshakes, right? I told you about the three-way handshake to get TCP up, additional handshakes to get the TLS up. We can fix that. Faster handshakes makes, uh, makes it a shorter time to actually can get data transmitted. And we can fix that TFO problem, right? Sending data earlier in the handshake. Now we can sort of start over and do it properly from the beginning. And why not, when, while we are at it, the problem, I mean, TCP was created in a completely different world, right? Uh, the internet in the 80s. Nowadays, we all have many network interfaces on our computers. We have Wi-Fi, we have mobile data, we have uh, cable e ethernet, whatever. And TCP connections are, they are bound to an IP address, right? IP address and port number and a little extra. But uh, that makes it really hard. So if you move your phone from your Wi-Fi to your cellular connection, right? What does a TCP connection do? It doesn't, it can't just move it over because it's bound to that t IP address. So it has to make a new connection. While a quick connection is bound by a connection ID which is independent of the IP address so it can actually move over to the other network address, uh, network interfaces, but uh, never mind. Uh, and of course, even more encryption always. There's no clear text version of quick. Everything is encrypted. Well, not the initial handshake packets, but more of the handshake packets and more of all packets are encrypted in Quick than in TCP with TLS to make it future proof that it allows us to continue to develop this, hopefully going forward. So basically, this is a protocol built on top of UDP. So we leave TCP and UDP to be the ones. We can't introduce any new ones, so sort of we're given up. Um, and we pretend UDP is like IP. We use it to send packets. Uh, so we build something on top of UDP. Basically, introduce a TCP TLS-like thing, sending UDP packages. And so, just to emphasize, this isn't UDP. It's built on top of UDP. You know, UDP is connectionless, and you send whatever you want to do. It might end up or in you know, an order and stuff like that. But with Quick, we actually build it on top of UDP. So we add a, a whole, you know, reliable stack on top of that. Do resends, retransmits add connections and streams and, real, and flow control and stuff like that, and uh, security, so it's always secure and encrypted. And this is then a transport protocol, right? It's not HTTP, this is a TCP replacement, or TCP and TLS replacement. And why, then we add these streams in the transport protocol. So we have streams, like we did with HTTP2, but here they are in the transport protocol, like TCP with streams, right? There were a protocol called SCTP done once. They, well, 
protocol exists, but it's not used across the internet because of what I told you before. It also had streams, so it's not a new idea with streams. So you, we have n a number of logical flows within that connection, and they're in independent here. So if you lose a few packets, only those streams that are affected by those lost packages are actually paused, so the other ones can continue. So a client can ask for image A and image B, and they can be sent in an order and then can arrive in another order if you're just un unlucky and lose packets just belonging to just one of those images or one of those streams. Uh, interesting times. <coughs> Yeah, they're independent. Basically, that, it means that uh, the old way of doing things, when we had one TCP connection to do many streams, there were streams, and here are two streams, the green stream and the red stream. If you lose one of these packets, like you lose the red one, uh, the green one has to wait as well. But while you're doing it with quick, they're independent of each other. It doesn't matter. If you lose a blue one, the yellow one can continue anyway. They, they don't uh, uh, stop each other. And then this is a trans, quick is a transport protocol, so then we do application protocols on top of that, and they then get streams for free, right? So it gets easier to do other protocols to have streams. Could be any protocol, but the, uh, the working group in the IETF, they pretty much immediately said that it's too much work to do more than HTTP, so let's just focus on HTTP and wait with everything else. So all the other could be anything wait for the quick version one to ship, and then they will start working on other protocols to do over quick as well. Um, and I, I'm sure there are a lot of them just waiting for this to happen, and then we'll see protocols like DNS and WebRTC and other interesting things. <coughs> so HTTP 3 is that application layer on top of this transport. HTTP over quick is HTTP 3. Um, so again, HTTP is the same thing. I showed you in the beginning how HTTP looks like, and it looks pretty much the same uh, from, from that point of view. So HTTP is still that request. We send a method and a path, and we get headers. We send headers. We can actually send a body too, like in a post. And we get the same thing to back, like we used to, right? We get a response. We get a response code and headers and a body, like we always do, the, the way we're used to. And it is the same, it's just different on the wire. So HTTP 1 and 1 was basically all in text, and sort of serially, and then we did HTTP 2 binary and multiplex within that HTTP 2, and now we do binary again, but we've moved the streams into the transport instead of the um, HTTP layer. So this means that going back to how the protocol stacks look like, that I showed you before, how it, you know, this, was, uh, this is how it looks to the traditional stack, HTTP 1, HTTP 2. Simple, basic, the way we we know and have been used to for a long time. And now, in, instead, we go over UDP. We add a huge, chunking, quick stack in there, TLS 1.3 embedded in the quick thing. Awesome complexity. I'll get back to that. Why that is fun. And uh, then we add an HTTP on top of that. So it is very different, but still similar, right? So um, HTTP 3 here is not very different than HTTP 2 feature-wise. It's, it's similar, but on the wire, it's completely different. Right, the streams are now moved down right into the quick layer instead of the HTTP layer. It doesn't really matter for now and for HTTP users, of course, because it'll look the same. <coughs> so if we compare pure uh, HTTP features, 2 versus 3, what's, what's the difference going to be? Not a lot of difference. Uh, of course, we change transport, so everything is going to be done over quick instead. Quick is suddenly, suddenly targeted to s maybe become a TCP replacement going forward for, for many things. And of course, we have streams, but now the streams have been moved down into quick, so actually understanding HTTP has become easier, but quick is more complicated. So there's no clear text version. There are independent streams, which makes them slightly different, because now suddenly they can actually come back in another order. Uh, than before, and because of the independent streams, we actually had to also uh, change the header compression method for HTTP, but it doesn't matter, it works basically, basically the same. You can still do server push exactly like you did in HTTP 2, well, not exactly the same way, but very similar. And hopefully you can do early data better, not the TFO problem, but now we can actually send early data, and early data in HTTP, in the browser world, that is, of course, uh, fun, because then you can actually send out your request earlier and sending out the request earlier from the browser to the server will, of course, 
make your response come back earlier, so it'll be slightly faster to get something back. Um, and a uh, quick also introduces much faster handshakes. I mentioned before, the zero hard DT handshake, for example, the being the fastest one, so not even a full round trip to, to get a new connection up. Faster, lower latency. And uh, another interesting thing is that uh, the prioritization thing in HTTP2 has been a, well, I wouldn't say positive, not a disaster, I call it messy, because that's certainly what it is. Uh, um, so nobody has really agreed to exactly how it should be done and handled and everything, so it's overly complicated and people have more or less agreed that it shouldn't be like that in HTTP 3, so it's being changed in HTTP 3 and actually haven't been decided yet exactly how it's supposed to work. It's a meeting right now going on in Singapore, but I chose to be here with you. Uh, no, so, so, and they actually discussed that widely yesterday, so yeah, it's not landed yet. Yeah. Going back to when we're going to see this. Uh, so HTTP 3 is going to be faster primarily then thanks to quick and we're doing faster handshakes so it's, it's really bound to be faster to get data out and data back um, but how much i don't know we're certainly going to thanks to independent streams are certainly going to be much better in lost in network situations but you know that's not going to be uh, us in this room in our home networks with gigabits and sub milliseconds round trips that's not this it's more like when you're on a shitty mobile network in a foreign country when you're going to see the huge benefits of that. And um, I don't have any good numbers. Um, I'll get back to why I don't have that, but it, um, really it's early days and uh, there are optimizations to be done everywhere and it, I think it's unfair to do them too early to say that sort of I can't really compare them fairly today. But anyway, uh, HTTPS means TCP or rather HTTPS colon slash slash URLs, they're everywhere, right? But how do you connect to an HTTPS colon URL with your browser or client or whatever? It sort of implies TCP and TLS on port 443 by default. So how do you get to HTTP 3 from that? Because that's not TLS and TCP anymore. Um, complicated. Or rather, this is the way you say it in the standard. You return a header from the, your uh, server that says, my HTTP 3 server is over there or here. On same server, other server, port number with that protocol for this uh, amount of time into the future. So basically, you, you have to have that round trip to ask your server. The server can then advertise that I have an HTTP uh, my, I am also available over HTTP 3 like this. And then the client will cache that for a while and use HTTP 3 going forward, uh, hopefully. Uh, not at all as convenient and, and um, fast and easy as it was to get HTTP 2 with the ALPN thing. But uh, there are certainly going to be cases when, where at least your favorite browsers are going to raise the con uh, connections because it certainly might be faster, right? Raise them, try both at the same time. Or four if you're counting IPv4, IPv6 too. So yeah, why not try four connections at once and go with the fastest and the one that works? Uh, it will definitely going to be needed uh, occasionally anyways, because, um, because of reasons I'll get back to in, <laughs> in a second, uh, because it's going to fail so often otherwise. Uh, and the uh, quick connections do verify the uh, host certificate, no, sorry, the server certificate anyway, so it, it will know that it actually connects to the proper site anyway, to the, same, to the proper host, so it connecting to the wrong one won't be a, a problem even if you raise them and sort of bet that it will work. There's also an um, interesting DNS record in the works called HTTPS SVC, which is basically the old service header uh, for DNS. So you can resolve that and figure out if you can talk to that site uh, using HTTP 3 from the beginning instead of uh, wasting round trips. Well, you waste the DNS round trip, but not the TCP round trip. So, okay, will we see uh, HTTP 3? So I'm, I'm trying, I have this fun eight HTTP 3 challenges. I'm sure there are more, but uh, here are my favorite ones. First, uh, the, the ones with that quick will fail in three to 7% of all connection attempts. And these numbers come from uh, Google and Facebook, and I'm sure that these numbers will possibly go up or down going forward. But anyway, a lot of organizations, companies, uh, venues, they block UDP traffic basically because who wants UDP traffic? <laughs> so, uh, well, 
up to now, basically what we've used U uh, UDP for is, uh, well, we can do, do DNS and we do uh, NTP, more or less, yeah, then that's it. So better block, and the rest is the DDoS attacks. So by blocking it, we, s we save us from DDoS attacks. So we have a, a there's a big percentage of connections that just fail, right? And then we have to have fallbacks. And, and the fallbacks have to be reliable here because with that high percentage of failure, we need to fall back to HTTP 2, HTTP 1. And then, of course, it's sort of it's the wrong incentive for the blockers, right? Because it doesn't matter if they keep blocking UDP now because everyone will fall back to TCP anyway. So, and it, it's fairly complicated, this falling back mechanism. And also since this blocking of UDP is going to be bound to where you are or the network topology rather than the specific site you go to. So if you, you know, you have a, you watch YouTube at home with your laptop and you put it up and you go to your coffee shop and open it again and continue, will it be able to connect to HTTP 3 again or not? We don't know because something along the way might block UDP on that place, but not on that place. So it's going to be a challenge for uh, HTTP clients to handle that. It is very CPU intensive. And then this is primarily a problem then if, if you run servers. We're talking two to three times the CPU performance for the same bandwidth, which is, of course, uh, an enormous amount of CPU, especially if you have a fairly well-trafficked site. There are, of course, numerous efforts that, uh, ongoing to fix this. Yeah, there are a lot of work in the... And I, I, w I should also just say that, of course, I mean, the, prob the problems here are primarily within Linux and because who uses anything else for servers anyway. So, um, so there are a lot of work in, in fixing the, the UDP stack and, and offering you new APIs to do this faster and, and also help um, hardware offloading better because all of that needs to be done in new ways with quick that, so we can't reuse the old TCP TLS model anymore. So that's, that's, um, that's in the way for, and, uh, um, my favorite, of course, is the funny TLS layer. So, as you might remember, I showed you how we use um, IP, UDP, and we put Quick on top of that. And Quick has TLS 1.3 within itself, right? So, we reuse all the benefits of TLS 1.3 in this stack. We don't invent any new encryption protocol. Google Quick actually had a, originally had a entirely its, its own encryption and security, and that was thrown out when it came into the ITF. So, sure. TLS 1.3, proven, tested, well, secure. But uh, TLS is designed to work over TCP. This isn't over TCP. So they changed how we used uh, TLS uh, in, the, in uh, Quick then. So TLS basically is usually used to send records with messages within it. Those records are gone, so now we're only sending TLS messages. That might not matter if to anyone, really, but um, the point here is that no TLS library had APIs for this. So basically, there are many TLS libraries, but none of them had APIs for, for this starting just a few years ago. So basically, we just have to fix all TLS libraries to, to offer new APIs for this. And then um, they also introduced some other secrets that you actually need to extract from the, t from the TLS layer as well that, that uh, isn't usually used. So just have to add those little extra APIs <laughs> in all the TLS libraries. Um, and that's a slow process. Uh, I'll get back to a little pull request later. But uh, what, it, what is good for most of the implementers of quick stacks here, that most of them have their own TLS stacks. So most of them have already fixed this for their own stacks. But the, the biggest public primary open source one, OpenSSL, they're not there yet. Um, some others are. They're all user land, right? Everything, everything written to handle quick are libraries run, run, running in user land, which may, means that you have to pick it, build it, install it, and use it. And they're all having different APIs because there's no different, there's no standard quick API here either. So you have to marry one of these and, and hope that it'll be good for you. Or, or you have to find one that will actually end up in a distro that you're using and it's not going to happen anytime soon, of course, because it hasn't stabilized yet. Uh, and uh, there's a slight lack of tooling. What, you can use Wireshark to, to snoop and, and, and analyze your traffic, but I think that's about it. And um, we've learned TCP details uh, through a long time. And so 
it might take a little time to get tools and understanding of everything how to do quick, the quick details. So when will this ship? Uh, the quick working group has a charter that has some interesting milestones. This will ship in July 2019. <coughs> but, uh, but there's an interop meeting in February, so maybe this is going to be 2020 instead. Uh, they actually stopped updating that milestone list. It still says July 20, but I think it's fun, and nobody actually believes in this, of course. But, uh, mm, so we don't know. Maybe mid-2020. So there are a lot of implementations. All of these uh, fun companies I mentioned in the beginning, they have their own uh, implementations that you can uh, sort of, they're mostly open source, you can download all of those in a, a huge amount of different languages, so pick whatever you think is fun and, and get it, build it, and play with it. Uh, there are monthly interrupts within the working groups, so you can actually, they're all making sure that they're actually fairly interoperable and they work according to the current spec draft, which is draft 24 right now. So what is good here that, the, well, the best is, of course, that curl supports this already. And you can use it with Chrome and Edge Canary since uh, a few weeks back, and, uh, and uh, Firefox Nightly too. They all need a little bit of a, a hand-holding to get it actually activated. You have to use switches or fiddle with some configurations, but you can figure that out. Um, you can run uh, servers too. You can use Caddy as a server to, to get it working. And there's also a patch for Nginx to use the quish, the quiche uh, HTTP3 and Qu quick library to, to run your HTTP3 server. I think that is what Cloudflare is using for their public HTTP3 server. What is less good is that there's no Safari yet, and uh, there's no Apache or IIS work that I know of. And there's uh, this pull request in OpenSSL called 8797 that is the ongoing discussion on how to do this API that will allow anyone to write a quick library to, to, do, to use OpenSSL for, for the TLS parts, which of course is a huge blocker here because we want this fixed, we want it in OpenSSL in a stable version in all Linux distros, and then we can ship. So yes, it is a bit of a far away still. Uh, it actually provides the same API as boring SSL does, you know, the Google clone or fork of, of uh, OpenSSL. So we can actually already, we can work out the details with boring SSL and hopefully it'll work with OpenSSL going forward. So when you do this in curl, then we can actually use draft 24, which actually I landed yesterday. Uh, so it, it all works, you can try it and you can build curl with either of these libraries and GTCP2 or Quiche because why pick one when you can go with two? And I don't do any fallback <laughs> yet because it's hard. So if you, if you do it, it actually works just with anything else in curl, right? You just ask for HTTP 3 instead of anything else and you get a response back like, it looks like the HTTP you're used to, right? Because it's, it pretends or it actually translated into the HTTP 1 look. So you can just pretend it's the same HTTP as always. And this is how most HTTP clients and everything will do. You know, the browsers will also show them like this in uh, network tools and stuff. Uh, and so th then people tend to ask me, so when will curl ship this? And it's a, it is a house of card, right? Because the specifications are not done. Um, the libraries are all in beta or haven't even released anything yet. They're basically all in 0 0.1 releases. And there are basically no servers out there because of the same reasons. Um, the browser. <laughs> I tried the first Firefox uh, version two, two weeks ago, I think. It crashed immediately when I tried it. That was fun. Uh, so yeah, libcurl waits for all that, and then we need to have that TLS situation sorted out. And you know, TLS situation sorted out and shipped in Linux distros everywhere, that's going to take a while. Back when we shipped HTTP2, we had this problem that we wanted, we needed ALPN, which is a TLS extension to ship, to use HTTP2 over HTTPS, if you remember the details, it doesn't matter. But we needed that little bit, and it was available in the latest OpenSSL, but not in the stable one. The stable one being the version that all the CentOS in the world installs. So it took a long time until people actually got that stable uh, version to actually support ALPN. But at that time, ALPN support was already in OpenSSL when we shipped HTTP2. Here, we're, we don't even, <laughs> the pull request is still live. The code hasn't even landed into OpenSSL yet. So, I, yeah, it's a challenge. And then maybe one day we'll see curl support HTTP3 in the distro. So looking at the, the future then of uh, how will this fare going forward, I think it will take a long time. Those were eight challenges that I could come up with, but I'm sure there are others. 
I, I can come back to that DDoS looking UDP, you know, random noise. This is exactly the same as quick over the wire. <coughs> so my, my, um, I say that it will grow slower because I think all these challenges and all the um, problems here, the CPU performance, maybe you won't gain that much. Who's going to switch this on in, uh, on day one? I'm sure that the big ones, the Facebooks, the Googles, and they are going to ship a Cloudflare. They're going to ship HTTP 3 day one, as soon as they can. And all the browsers will do it, but the rest of us, what's the benefit going to be for us uh, from this day one? We're going to have to wait for kernels and everything to get better. So some or many will just stick and around and see how this develops going forward. But Quick as a protocol is definitely done for the long term. It's going to be the TCP replacement for more protocols. So maybe it doesn't matter if HTTP 3 doesn't sort of become an immediate hit. Maybe it's uh, Quick for, for the next five years, 10 years, 20 years. Maybe it, it really is a post TCP world with Quick only going forward. So as soon as Quick One ships, there's a lot of people waiting for this to happen, and then there's going to be an, an, an intense work on fixing Quick V2. Quick V2 then, because there's a lot of issues in, in GitHub now marked V2 work, because it's sort of postponed so that we can ship this at some point. Uh, so there's a lot of work waiting to just get started, like multipath and <laughs> forward error correction. And the funny thing I th think is unreliable streams, which is sort of you know UDP back into Quick. Uh, but it's fun. Uh, so yeah, there's going to be, uh, and more application protocols, of course, DNS, WebRTC, uh, whatever, a lot of that. And then when I, uh, <laughs> as a bonus here, since I have time, I think, I'm talking so fast. So um, then I, when I come to this point, then people usually then ask me, yeah, well, what about WebSockets, right? So I didn't say a word about WebSockets. But, you know, uh, WebSockets is not part of HTTP. It was never part of HTTP. It's sort of bolted onto HTTP because HTTP is a transport, basically. And WebSockets, uh, RFC from 2011, right? Uh, took ages to get into HTTP 2. I think it took almost three and a half years until th there was a solution to do WebSockets of HTTP 2. It was made in this RFC 8441. It basically lets you use a stream instead of taking over the entire connection, which I think most people still do because they do WebSockets of HTTP 1.1. And this way uh, is actually quite possible to do HTTP 3 as well. You could do it. The spec clearly says you do this over HTTP 2, but you could probably just update the spec and say you do it the same way over HTTP 3 as well. It hasn't been done. Um, I think someone might do it at some point, but uh, it's still there to happen. We'll see. Uh, okay, you can wake up over there. Um, um, uh, it's going to come soon. It's always going to be encrypted. It is very similar in HTTP 2, sort of feature-wise and bit-wise, um, sort of from a, from a user perspective. And it's the new transport protocol, quick over UDP, always encrypted. There are some challenges to overcome, mostly service side, but also client side. And uh, so, and here's my favorite line of my entire presentation, the one that I've changed the most number of times, I think. When will we see this? I say early mid, but eh, early mid some year going forward. Probably mid 2020, perhaps, I don't know. Uh, we'll see, it'll be fun. I wrote pretty much all I've said today, I wrote in a little document you can uh, read it online if you want to read it again. But otherwise, I am done. Thank you. <laughs>